I'm the founder and commander of Amex Code 66. All right, sir. So, Mr. Hernandez, can you tell us about this event going on here today? Well, we're sorry that the Veterans Day Parade in Palm Springs was canceled or postponed because of the pandemic. So we're having a safe Veterans Day ceremony here at the uh, cemetery where the California LGBTQ Veterans Memorial is located. Our post dedicated that memorial, and it's a state memorial. It's the only state in the nation that has a memorial for gay veterans is here in California, in Cathedral City. And uh, we hope to have a good turnout today. Veterans Day is very important. We have about a list of 40 veterans that we're going to mention before we play taps that have, that have, that have passed away that we love and miss. And uh, we have some nice speakers today presenting two awards. And uh, we're, we're, you know, Veterans Day is a very important day because it, it started back in 1918 for the end of World War I. And we were hoping after World War I we'd have world peace. And uh, we have George Silver speaking today about peace because our veterans who fought in war uh, know the horrors of war, and we want we want peace. Peace is the best solution for everything. I just pray that uh, this ceremony today, we're, we're calling for unity and healing, and every, the country will pull together, and we'll all move forward and uh, and uh, and uh, continue to support our veterans. Greetings, everyone. I'm ringing the bell because November 11, 1918, all across America and all across the world, people rang bells because it, signed, it was the ending of World War I. That's when the armistice was signed. And the first armistice day was celebrated by President Woodrow Wilson, November 11, 1919, and Congress changed it to Veterans Day. We're here at the California LGBTQ Veterans Memorial, but we're here today for all veterans. And I'll make that very clear. We're here for all veterans who have served our country and our, honor our war dead, everyone. We're inclusive. And, uh, at this time, I'd like to, because uh, I'm legally blind and it's hard for me to read in this bright sun, sun I'm going to have Randy Shaker read my welcome remarks. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. My name is Tom Swan Hernandez, and I am the founder and president of Veterans for Peace. I'm also the founder and commander of AMVETS Post 66. I'm legally blind, so please be patient with me. This ceremony is being sponsored by Veterans for Peace, AMVETS Post 66, at Occupy Coachella Valley. We are very grateful for the support of Kathleen Jurasky, manager of the Palm Springs Cemetery District. You are required to wear a mask at all times and remain six feet apart. We have water available for you. Veterans Day was originally called Armistice Day in the United States, commemorating the signing of, of the agreement that ended World War I at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918. President Woodrow Wilson celebrated the first Armistice Day in 1919. In 1938, November 11th became a legal holiday by an act of Congress. The sacred scriptures and the teachings of several religions beckons us to be the light of the world. There is much darkness in the world right now. President John Kennedy said that instead of cursing the darkness, we should light a candle. So let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with us. Pope Francis said recently, what is faith if we are not faithful? We have to stay faithful to, to peace in the face of a pandemic, economic downturn, racial injustice, and polarization. Our country has suffered from bad leadership. Our people seek merciful change in the direction of our country. Mercy can be defined as love that encounters suffering and decides to take action. Let us resolve to strive to be change makers. We just held an election that we hope will usher in healing and unity. Our veterans have placed themselves in harm's way in order to safeguard our democracy. The California LGBTQ Veterans Memorial honors the many men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice for the cherished freedoms we hold dear and enjoy today. The souls of our deceased war dead and veterans in purgatory and heaven will hear our prayers today for them and they will be very grateful to us for remembering their sacrifice and service to our nation. So with this introduction, we begin our program. Okay, thank you, Randy. You're At welcome. this time, I'd like to introduce Chuck Parker to say the pledge. And then after that, we'll have Paul Kane sing the Star Spangled Banner.
At this time, we'll have the invocation by our chaplain, Bill Rufrak. May we pray, please? Almighty God, the cause of liberty is yours. Today, we remember all veterans who have served in American Armed Forces, and we give thanks. We're grateful that you inspire the sense of patriotism, strengthen them in unselfish service. Their courage ensures the freedom and peace we enjoy today. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, to each of them a generous portion of your grace and to America and to our native land and your blessing. Amen. Amen. We have here in the front here this POW MIA uh, banner here on this chair, this empty chair, and it's because our POWs can't be with us, our MIA cannot be with us visiting in action. We remember them, we're not going to forget them, and that's why we have an empty chair there. And I want to thank Felice for uh, being one of our sponsors today. Thank you for her donation. Now, we have a reading of a proclamation from the governor of California for Veterans Day. Gavin Newsom. Randy Shepard is going to read that. Executive Department, State of California. On November 11th each year, we pay tribute to those who serve this nation as members of our armed forces. Today, nearly 1.6 million veterans live and work in our state, and many more Californians have close family members who are veterans. These individuals continue to serve their communities as small business owners, civic leaders, first responders, volunteers, mentors, and in countless other roles and professions. We set aside this day to recognize the personal sacrifices American heroes have made to defend our Constitution and the freedoms it guarantees, but also to recognize the enduring respect they deserve every day. Some members of our veteran population experience homelessness, mental health disorders, and other challenges after military service. In our boundless gratitude for their service, we must continue our efforts to support veterans and address these important issues. In the words of President Truman, our debt to the heroic men and valiant women in the service of our country can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. America will never forget their sacrifices. The ongoing pandemic will, have, will alter the way we recognize Veterans Day this year in many parts of the state. Though it restricts or prevents the parades, picnics, and other gatherings that we have become tradition over the decades, it cannot and will not diminish our love, respect, and continued support for veterans. Now, therefore, I, Gavin Newsom, Governor of the State of California, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2020, as Veterans Day. Thank you. Sir. Now, I'd like to, uh, I know that Rita Lamb is here, the Cathedral City Council member. She's going to speak in a couple of minutes. But is there any other elected official or dignitary that we need to recognize? If you're, if you're here, please hold up your hand and say your name, please, and your title. Anybody else? We have Kathleen Jorowski, the manager of the Sunderland District. Anybody else? Jan Pye, councilwoman from Desert Hospital. Yes, yeah, welcome, yeah. welcome. She's on the cemetery board, I believe, too, I think. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, at this time I'd like to introduce Rita Lamb. She was just re-elected to another term on the Cathedral City Council. Her father served in World War II in the Navy, and uh, we're so happy she's here to welcome us to Cathedral City. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I, I, I am more than delighted, more than honored to be here at this gathering. Um, as we recognize the accomplishments and the contributions and the sacrifices of our service. Um, and what I was thinking about today, um, my dad, as uh, Tom pointed out, my dad was a proud Navy veteran. And two days after he graduated from Downers, Downers Grove High School in Illinois, he and his buddy, Sonny Leeds, signed right up for the Navy and off they went. And my father passed away three days after Thanksgiving, two years ago. He passed away on November 25th. And throughout his entire life, 
His service to his country was one of his proudest accomplishments. He loved my mom. He loved me. I'm an only child, so I have no siblings that are going to be upset by me saying that. <laughs> um, and he loved his service to the country. And uh, the last year of his life, we moved him from his uh, our family home in Burbank out to um, uh, in Rancho Mirage, and he was uh, staying in an assisted living facility. And it was pr one of his proudest moments, I found a picture of him, a handsome, he was the handsomest man I ever met and the funniest man I ever met. My husband's over here and he already knows that. Um, uh, and, and I found a picture of him, it was beautiful, and it was the day he um, left the Navy service and he was all in uniform. And we had it framed and put on the wall of his assisted living facility. And he started to cry. Uh, and he told his stories of his experiences aboard the uh, it was a, a cargo ship, uh, supply ship called the Prometheus. And he stole, stole, told that story year after year after year, embellished it more, it got more exciting, and I was always <laughs> on the edge of my seat. So, um, you know, we cannot, as we, we said earlier, we cannot repay the debt um, to these men and women who have sacrificed so much for us, but we can pay it forward. And my admonition for all of us today is to be kind to one another and take care of one another. So thank you for opening this thank you for your hearts to us. Thank you. Thank you.
And I'd like to introduce Lenny Cordlow, who's got an exciting program for veterans, and he's doing a great job. He's a great community leader and activist. Lenny Cordlow. I was not expecting this, but thank you, Tom. Um, we've been working uh, with Tom on a program to develop uh, uh, providing cannabis to veterans who are in need of it. Uh, cannabis is amazing for many of the ailments that veterans suffer, especially PTSD and the pain from the injuries that they sustain while in service. Yet the product remains absorbently expensive so that they cannot afford it. We're working with uh, Bloom Network to hopefully start providing fairly soon a program where they could go down to a local dispensary and pick up enough product to get them through each month. This program is designed not, a lot of the programs out there are uh, designed, they just give them a small amount. This program is being designed so they can actually get uh, the quantity they need. And if they're using it for pain, especially, uh, they usually need uh, large quantities. Um, it's getting, you know, I would like to just mention that the, the acceptance of cannabis is becoming far more widespread in our last election. Um, it was kind of a mixed bag for Republicans and Democrats, but the real big winner was cannabis. Four more states, uh, South Dakota, Montana, New Jersey, and Arizona all legalized it for all uses for by adults for any use, and the state of Mississippi legalized it for medical uh, use. So we're making more progress right now. One person out of every three people in the United States lives in a state in which cannabis is legal for all uh, purposes and uh, we hope to be able to this is this is wonderful news i hope that will bring the price down cannabis is ridiculously expensive and part of the reason is because of its uh, ludicrous way it has to be cultivated and raised not like any other agricultural crop and also because of all the huge taxes that are being dumped on it as the government are trying to make up for lost uh, money due to covid by uh, uh, taxing the heck out of cannabis, but uh, we're hoping to provide it to uh, all the veterans here in the Coachella Valley uh, that can use it, and we hope to provide it for them free. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Recently, we presented an award to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. I've known her since 1981, and I know it's her daughter very well. And uh, so we have a thank you letter from House Speaker Pelosi that Randy Chester's going to read. Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, March 16th. 2020 to the Inland Empire Chapter of Veterans for Peace. Many thanks for the 2020 Elected Official of the Year Award and lovely inscribed plaque. It is an honor to be recognized. What a wonderful reminder of the hard work your chapter does on behalf of all veterans. Thank you again for your service and thoughtfulness. Best regards, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House. Thank you. And get, the, get the award for you hearing, George. We're going to present an award now, a special achievement award to the Unitarian Universalist Church. It's for the entire church. On the plaque it says the Social Justice Committee, but it's really for the whole church. And they've served our community for many years. I think I think about 30 years, if I'm not mistaken, in a lot of community service. And uh, they've, they've helped veterans for peace. We're very grateful for their support. And we'd like to present them with this award. And I'll have Randy read the plaque. And Mac Rogers is going to come up and accept it on behalf of the church. OK, the plaque reads, Veterans for Peace, John Castro, Chapter 19, Inland Empire, California. Special Achievement Award for Outstanding Service, Unitarian Universalist Church of the Desert Social Justice Committee. We honor your leadership and devoted service to our veterans. You have created a more positive, equal, loving, and community for everyone in our Coachella Valley. Thank you, Mac. Mac and Mary. Get it. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, can we get a picture of the two of us here together? Uh, yeah. Thank you. The three of us here together. You got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We are humbled and beyond honored to be. Uh, acknowledged today how we have a connection with veterans for peace and um uh the other two organizations what post 66 and occupy coachella valley and occupy coachella valley i'm sorry um we have a relationship with them because once a month at our church we share the plate 
In other words, whatever we, uh, whatever we get from contributions for that particular day of the church, we like to give half of it to what we feel is a marginalized community or a community that doesn't get enough um, honoring. So we felt very, very good that we found, that we found Tom Swan and, that, uh, and his organization and everything that he's been doing. So um, we're, we're, we're very, very excited for this. And again, yes, it's more than just the Social Justice Committee. It is our whole church, UUCOD, which stands for uh, Unitarian Universalist Church of the Desert. And we're so happy to be here. Thank you again so much. Thanks. This is a huge Thanks. honor. Thank you. Now we have the Daryl James Silver Helmet Award to our member of the year in AMBETS. That goes to our chaplain and provost marshal, Bill Ruprecht. I put his biography on the uh, internet. He was a colonel in the Air Force. He was a chaplain for the Veterans Affairs. He's a major volunteer at the USO and at the V Hospital. He used to drive the Ambex Express and uh, received the Jefferson Award, one of the highest awards that a public service person can receive. And we have we have an award plaque and we have awards from Reverend Raul Ruiz, Chancellor Louis Eduardo Garcia, and Chancellor Romano Perez. Okay, the plaque reads, Ambets, Frank Moulton, Post 66, Palm Springs, California. Daryl James Memorial Silver Helmet Award, Member of the Year 2020. Bill Rupra, mm -hmm. correct? Post Provost Marshal and Chaplain. We honor your service as a Chaplain Colonel in the, in the Air Force and as a Chaplain with the VA. Your leadership and compassion have helped many people in need. Your fine example of public service has been an inspiration to our young people. Your hard work for our post is greatly appreciated. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, we we're very, very grateful that County Supervisor Manuel Perez is here. You know, and for Peace Day, the County Board of Supervisors adopted a resolution, a proclamation, I believe it was, for Peace Day. We have John from the Supervisor Perez's office coming here today to uh, re read a special document from Manuel Perez. Thank you. Come, please come, Darren. Thank you, Tom, and um, it's an honor on this this Veterans Day um, to be here on behalf of Supervisor Perez and also to congratulate Bill on the, the Daryl James uh, Award. Um, and uh, Supervisor Perez um, would like to present, would uh, like this letter presented to AMVETS Post 66 on uh, the occasion of uh, Veterans Day 2020, November 11, 2020. Veterans Day is special, a day of honor, pride, and thankfulness for all veterans, and reflection on the reason we are free as a country. It is due to our veterans. With over 130,000 veterans, Riverside County is home to the eighth largest veteran population in the nation. We place a high priority on supporting our veterans and strive to serve them as well as they have served us. Alongside our colleagues in local government, state and federal government representatives, and with all the excellent and dedicated veteran service organizations and military service organizations, I am proud we are working on many initiatives to enhance services for veterans and their families and toward an overall vision of having Riverside County be the most veteran-friendly county in the country. This year, we inaugurated the Riverside County Veteran Transportation and Supports VETS program. This program links veterans in need of transportation to a range of options that include the AMVETS Express for their medical appointments. The VETS program is available to veterans residing anywhere within Riverside County who don't have means of transportation to health care. It is a wonderful resource that veterans can turn to. All the veteran needs to do is call 1-800-510-2020 for the Riverside County Office on Aging's help link. As we celebrate Veterans Day, 
I close with the words of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who issued the first official Veterans Day proclamation in 1954. Quote, on this day, let us solemnly remember the sacrifices of all those who fought so valiantly on the seas, in the air, and on foreign shores to preserve our heritage of freedom. And let us reconsecrate ourselves to the task of promoting an enduring peace so that our efforts shall not have been in vain. On behalf of the Board of Supervisors, thank you veterans for your service. God bless all of you and God bless our beautiful country. Signed, Supervisor V. Manuel Perez, Chair of the Board of Supervisors of Riverside County. That's wonderful, thank you. What a wonderful letter. Thank you very much. We're closest on the internet, so many people can read it. It's wonderful, wonderful letter. Madam President, done more for veterans than any supervisor we've ever had. And I was very close to Roy Wilson, the former supervisor. He was he was good. He appointed me to the Veterans Advisory Committee in Riverside County, but Mano President has even gone beyond him. So at this time, we'll have a, there's a World War I poem that Corey Bratt and the Vice President of Veterans of Peace is going to read, and it's very meaningful, and it's, it's said at every Veterans Day and Memorial Day service. So here's Corey Bratt. In Flanders fields, the poppies glow between the crosses, row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow loved and were loved and now we lie in flanders fields take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw the torch be yours to hold it high if you break faith with us who die we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you. Now at this time, we'd like to have you say the name of a deceased veteran that you love and miss. I've got several, uh, Rowan Fashon, uh, Frank Moulton, Charles James, Mel Tips, uh, Chuck Schoen, Mark Repass, the banker, Leonard Matlovich, Cesar Chavez, uh, Harvey Milk. Now, if you have some names that you want to mention that we will remember today. Colonel Ronald E. Nitsche, um, okay. brother-in-law, served in Vietnam. Um, we miss him so much. Okay. Anybody else? Charlie Sharples and Craig Osborne. Yeah, of course, them. Absolutely. Ronnie Wiggum. Okay. Where did he serve? Vietnam. Vietnam, okay. Anybody, who here? My father, Harold Messier, proud Navy veteran. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Cy Gubernick. He and I worked at the uh, AFRTS station in the Philippines. This is his hat I always wear on Veterans Day in honor of him. Mm -hmm. Cy Gubernick, he died 10 years ago this past August. Okay. Anybody else? Any other names? Uh, my father, uh, Vicente Humapau, he served in the uh, U.S. Navy World War II, and Richard Bentley, he also uh, just passed uh, right during COVID, and he did a lot for our veterans community here, and he was U.S. Navy as well, and Cy Kaplan. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, Robert Chuck, Robert Chuck, killed in Vietnam, veteran uh, from Newcastle, Wyoming. Thank you. Henry Schaumburg. World War, World War II, and I still have his trunks in our house. Thank you. Anybody else? My father, Paul Fritz Kane, uh, Korean War, uh, Navy man. Anybody else? My father, Bill Swan, served in the Korean War, Army. Okay, with that, we'll have the, the benediction by uh, Bill Rubrak, and then 
and so I'll have that right next. Great. The 29th Psalm, verse 11, we find these words. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it very much.